Hi everyone, it's Mr. Barden here. Today we're going to be talking about, you know, implementing some sprite collisions using the new P5 Play version 3 and the P5 JavaScript web editor. Before we hop into that, I just want to let you know that the a link to the code that I make during this video, which you can see on the screen right now, will be in the description down below. Also, if you enjoy the content, you learn something, definitely, you know, consider giving it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more and if you have any questions concerns or make something really cool I'd love for you to share that in the comments down below I love seeing what the community does and being able to respond and answer questions to help people dive a little further With that being said, let's just hop right into it Okay, so I've got right here uh, the link to this code, like I mentioned in the description, and really all it's doing is to putting these four sprites onto the canvas. That's that's the bulk of it. Uh, this started off, you know, going from the uh, you know moving a sprite using switch. Uh, that code, that video, just how to utilize a switch in JavaScript. So also we can move. Um, the co the sprite around this pink square is kind of the player sprite and why is it giving me a oh, i forgot my break i added that there we go um there we are so that's there the uh two of these sprites i think no just one right here this one is being randomly placed uh, on the screen this one's a circle this one's green Basically, what I'm wanting to show off is how you can implement different kinds of interactions between different sprites or groups of sprites. Now, I'll be coming out with a uh, more in-depth video on groups of sprites in a few days, uh, so don't worry if that's a little, you know, abstract. You're not quite sure exactly what's going on, but just know that you can put a bunch of sprites into a group and talk to all of them at once. That's a, a feature. So... What I'm wanting to do is have different things happen uh, when the player sprite, which again, I can control using the keyboard. There we go. I'll just pop it back to the middle. Um, you know, when it interacts with these other three on the canvas. And I'm wanting to frame this like I'm making a basic game. So I've got these two red sprites are going to serve as obstacles, and this uh, green one down here is going to be kind of the the goal, you know So maybe you have to get from a to B and there's stuff in the middle that can you know ruin your character and you know get a game over um, It's really really straightforward, especially with this new version 3.0 uh, The hard part is making the sprite and setting the the properties. I'm not going to go too much into that now um, I've got a little bit of that going on uh, already but what we need to do is essentially kind of the first thing that my class is really doing in the draw function in this unit. With the new version, we don't have to implement as much into draw, so this is kind of the first thing we have to do. And the main reason for that is because the computer has to repeatedly check and say, hey, it, you know, are these sprites inter you know, interacting with each other, yes or no? And then it a little bit later checks again, are they interacting with each other, yes or no? And that's kind of the core to what we're gonna be doing here. So it's pretty straightforward. We have to, uh, I'm gonna utilize an if statement in order to determine this. And it's gonna get angry at me because I didn't finish typing my statement. But if player, we have to talk to the sprite that we wanna talk with, um, and we have three main method, or three main, um, yeah, methods here uh, for determining the type of collision, and I'll list it here. Collided, colliding, or collides. These are the three main methods that are used to determine, you know, how are we interacting with them. So the way that this will work is collides. This is determined from whenever the sprite first touches the other sprite. So it, when sprite A first has a first frame where it's detected it's colliding with another sprite, that's when collides is set to true. For every frame that the sprites are colliding, then colliding is set to true. And then for the very first frame when the sprites are no longer touching, collided is set to true. 
That may be a little bit confusing, but the way I like to think about it is we can basically just set a flag to determine when the sprite uh, first touches for as long as they're touching and when they're no longer touching. And we can use that to set up different kinds of interactions. So if I said, you know, player dot collides, and then we have to we have an argument right here, and we have to just tell it what to collide with. So I tend to call my obstacles OBS and then give them a number. So when it collides with obstacle one, then we're gonna say whatever we wanna have happen. You can think of this like a little mini function of everything that's gonna be going on. So uh, maybe we'll just say uh, player, player dot rotation speed um, equals three, why not? Player dot Color equals color. We'll make it uh, make it black. I'll make it black and you know pretty kind of transparent. Why not? Um, and then we'll say uh, player dot life equals one hundred. So what this should mean is now whenever the computer detects that player one has collided with uh, obstacle one, then these three things will happen in order. And obstacle one is this circle up here. So if I move this, boop, 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 move it up, and we touch, boom, boop, there we go. So a few things. I want to uh, go in here and just say uh, up of my sprites. We'll go back to where we're setting the properties. Obstacle one dot collider equals static and obstacle two dot collider and static and did I miss oh, I forgot my S. There we go. So now that what this will do is this will just keep the other the obstacle sprites from moving around. So if I bump into it, boing, and then we go away. So again, just as a quick refresher, um, rotation speed just tells you how many degrees per frame to rotate the sprite. So that's what's making it spin. Uh, the color I just set it to black, but then made it kind of transparent. Um, and then the life, this is how many frames before the uh, the sprite is just removed from the sketch. And that may have been a little long. Let's make it uh, 75 frames. Why not? Um, so now whenever this sprite collides with uh, the circle, we get all of that. Uh, we could also set up a separate conditional, but maybe I want the same thing to happen when it touches both sprites. This is where adding them to a group would be very handy because we could just say, you know, obstacle group or whatever you named it, um, and we only need one. But um, right now, because we haven't talked about groups, I'll just say or layer dot collides with obstacle two. So now, as we move around, as soon as we touch obstacle two, we should see. Yep, the same thing happened. Um, I just refresh it to bring it in. Because obstacle two is randomly placed, if they automatically are touching, that triggers that game over state. Um, and we can, again, we can tweak this and see some slightly different things. If I set this to collided, then now we bump into it. It's a little hard to tell because the bounciness is high. Let me see if I can. Uh, you know, if I just remove that bounciness, we should see that um, nothing really happens until they're no longer touching. And then there we are. Once they've collided, uh, they they start touching. So I'll leave that as collided, and then we'll go over here and we'll say if do another one player dot let's say colliding. Why not uh, with uh, what did I call this? Goal. Then we're going to do something. Um, I think what I want to do is just run the setup function again because 
um, that'll just reset everything. So this is a way that we could, um, you know, just be like, hey, you won. Yay. What a uh, cool. Why not? Um, we could just say run the setup function again. So the way that the reason this is pretty useful is because, again, the, the goal of this very, very basic game is to not touch these two sprites, but to be able to get to this bigger green one over here. Again, it's a very, very simple game. I never, you know, said it was going to be the, the best game ever. Um, but as we move, you'll see that really there's not a whole lot going on in draw. All we're really doing is determining, you know, if they're colliding, do a thing. So everything else is in setup. So by running the setup function again. Ah, I see there. Okay. Um, that just makes a duplicate of our sprite. Um, interesting. Okay, that's uh, that's something I wasn't expecting it to do. I was expecting him to overwrite. So, uh, what we can do? There's a few different things. Um, what if we did uh, player dot remove uh, goal dot remove obstacle one dot remove two dot remove this will remove all and I, um remove the sprites i need to double check and see if there's just a more handy command for um you know we're just removing all of the sprites but we should see there we go um refresh that that uh when it um uh, be a better spot let me just make the, let me make obstacle two um a little smaller. And we'll make this uh, 50 to 300. 50. Just so that way there's more variety in where it can go. So now if we touch them, boink, it resets the code. Yeah, we're still going. Boom. There we are. Because, as you noticed, um, it doesn't, whenever we run the setup, the new sprites we make aren't going to override the old ones. Um, that was just a, a bad on my part. Uh, so we just have to remove the sprites and then go um, just rerun the setup to go make new ones. Um, but anyways, that, that's just a kind of a handy way to set that up. So again, if you wanted to create a multi-level session, uh, maybe with some randomly generated stuff, maybe not. Um, what you could do is just remove the old sprites, you know, maybe tick a level counter up and then, you know, rerun your functions that generate the sprites and, you know, and just reset the level. That's pretty much it. I just wanted to illustrate that again. We can have, uh, there's three different ways you can determine the type of collision. Depending on what you're looking for, you may find, um, uh, better uses for other ones and um, for the different ones. And generally speaking, you know, if you have two things that, you know, are not touching and then go to touching, I think collides um, is probably going to be your, your best bet. They, they ha these things happen very fast. As you can tell, there may not be much of a difference um, between all of them in the, you know, in actual practice. Collide did is very useful for when you have things that you know should be touching, and as soon as they're not, you want to be able to set. Um, and then colliding, you know, it's kind of in between. So again, it's whenever things are just constantly touching. And that's going to be it for now. So like I said, I'll have a link to this sketch down in the description below. Uh, so you know, check that out if you enjoyed it. You learned something definitely. Consider you know, like, comment, subscribe, all the the general YouTube stuff. It definitely helps out the channel a lot. With that being said, that's where we're gonna end it, and I will see you all the next time that I see you. Bye.